Hiya Squishers and welcome to another Squish with me Kate under the stairs with some of the Squish oh yay and today we're going to be chatting about wrist warmers and the return of autumn because it has definitely definitely <clears throat> changed outside it is no longer blisteringly hot like it was yesterday when I went metal detecting and like I always wonder why I do it I went metal detecting yesterday in my denim jeans my boots it was, I had to sit down, take my boots off and my socks off just for like 10 minutes of breeze just to cool myself down. That's how hot it was yesterday. I could hardly dig the ground, but I did find a silver penny. Oh, so I found some, found treasure, but it was just too hot. So I'm kind of glad that the weather has shifted a bit because everything needed a good rain today, a good rain, a good water in. And also it means we're starting to ebb into the next season, which is autumn. Oh, yes. Which is mostly all about, for me, cozying up inside, getting the fire on, which is on right now, and knitting. Because obviously in the summertime, I kind of feel like I'm a little bit restricted to knitting. Not restricted. That's just, that's, that's just not true. It's just so hot, knitting jumpers and cardigans and blankets, oh my, it's just a wee bit much for me because I like having a blanket. When I'm knitting a blanket, it generally like lies on my lap and I'm knitting and knitting and knitting. Whereas in the summertime, you kind of need small projects that just don't cover you when you're knitting because it is a bit like working with a thermal blanket. So, wrist warmers and small things would be my thing over the summer. But now we're getting into autumn, it's time to get cosy and... Oh, I've been taking a trip down memory lane today because I finally, finally, I'm doing the kit releases for this beauty. This is like one of my very first patterns, which you can download for free on the website in the free pattern section. Download it. It's loads of fun and you can do it any colours you like. But this colour combination I did as a one off when I made this wrist warmer ages and ages ago, about five, five, five years ago. And obviously I have changed a lot, I've changed a lot, things have changed a lot, I've knit a lot, but these have always been a pattern I've always wanted to come back and make a kit for because I know you guys, I, there's something about this combination, I don't know what it is, it makes me want to knit everything in it, but this combination I am finally, I finally over the summer holidays, when I had a bit of quiet time in the evening, <clears throat> I got the kits ready because I was like, let's knit. So what have I got together? Well, I've got kits in the shop. Well, I will have kits in the shop. Not now. Don't go to the shop. They're not in the shop right now. Join up Squishmail and you'll get a Squishmail off me to let you know when they're in the shop. But the kit will be for making one of these. Not, not one, because nobody needs just one a set. So two of these, boom, boom, with a repeat of three motifs. And this one I'm knitting on larger needles, not for the main, but this is on 2.25 needles. But the other is in my pocket. So I like about dungarees. I was just looking on there going, where is my needles? They're in my pocket. So the first bit on this one, I knit with 2.25 nine inch circular needles for socks. I love these. Like I would never knit tubes, tiny tubes. If I'd ne I don't even know how I found out about nine inch circular needles for socks. If you don't know, and this is your first time looking at these and you're like, what? They are like cocktail sticks on cables, but they are the most terrific fun. If you can just knit, just knit stitch. <clears throat> and once you get used to these, you can make tubes, socks, wrist warmers galore, and you will never use DPNs ever again in your life, unless you're casting on from the center out for making squishy dot things, which is a different conversation, but <clears throat> these change my knit game. So I've got these, but because this pattern, I was gonna poke this through my hair, just to let you know, that's what I would generally do. I'll put that there. <clears throat> this one, because five years ago, I did not know what I know about knitting now. You just don't know what you just don't know when you know, you don't know about it. So back then, because even now I'm an adventurous knit designer. That means like I adventure into designing stuff. I say don't design stuff. I just make stuff for myself. And then if I can, I make the pattern available for you guys to knit. And this one was one of the patterns I did first. So one of the things that I never knew about fair isle knitting back then, oh, I'll just, shall I hold my arm up here? <clears throat> is that actually things you learn as you knit for this, ah, 
We'll swap. No, I'll add two. I'll add two. I'll double up. This pick, this which you saw, which you saw on Instagram the other day, I finished. Look at that. And this is a really dense texture where you've got one on, one off. And this pattern also, if you're on Squishmail, you'll be receiving news about this. This is a whole heap of fun. But what I found really interesting about knitting <clears throat> two colours together is that actually when you're working on a small needle like the 2.25, which is my fave, just because my tension's evened out over the years, I used to be quite a tight knitter. So if you're a tight knitter, I would always suggest you go up just a titch, like 2.5. But when you're doing like colour work, I found that since knitting this piece, knitting it with a larger needle size, like a 3mm, <clears throat> which is what I've done here to give it a wider feel to it, because this one, like I've got sparrow wrists, it's fine. I'm okay with it. But if you're looking to make a larger size, the kit I'm doing is suitable for both. So if you're going to do it on the larger needles, which is a 3mm, it'll give you a little bit more room. And also, if you're really tight on your stitches, just go up a titch. Go up a titch! And it'll just give you a bit more freedom with your knitting and it'll give it a much better squishable texture. So this pattern is already free on the website. So if you like this, go grab it. <clears throat> this one is coming out super soon. And I took the leap after our chat the other day. Oh, don't let me forget about the hat. I'll touch it just so I don't forget. I'll hold it in my hand. <clears throat> and then I'll remember to talk about this. So I'll hold these here. This one I made straight after our chat when I was, I was not in, under, oh, I was in the other Squish space the other day on YouTube for a longer video where I chat about some stuff I've been making and also a, a, a roadblock I came up against, which I have since revol revolved, resolved, it revolved and I resolved it. Oh, yay. So I resolved that situation where I just had no idea where to go next, which direction. So I chose both paths because I just didn't want to be limited to one. So I went landscape and sunset and something else, which I shall show you in the other, the next video I do. Because I think some of you are already in my like project bags. Like I saw some, some of the comments on my YouTube videos about what you think I should be making. You're, you might want to be like, okay, I'm in Kate's project bag because I've had this to do, which I loved, which is a really simple pattern that uses up this tiniest amount of squish, like two grams, one gram, three grams, you name it, the tiny bits go into these ones. But I also have a project on the go, which is larger, because I also wanted something, because this lasted like a day. It's a whole heap of fun, whole heap of fun, but it's over in a day. So I wanted something that lasted a bit longer. So I'll show you that next time. But... <clears throat> My trip down memory lane with mushrooms did not end here because whilst I was trying to find this one, which is a ripe old age, it's a ripe old age. I also, at the same time, <clears throat> I'll pop this down. I waved it around. This hat, which I'm positive, it, this is in, this is in the shop for every download. This hat, I remember making, this might be my first ever, 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 ever hat pattern or ever pattern ever. And I remember Tabby modelling this for me when she was just one years old. I've got the photograph somewhere. It's just that she's got the cutest memory. She just looked as cute as a button in this. And I also made like a toadstool as well. I crocheted a toadstool. But if you're a toadstool fan, both of these woodland, woodland themed pieces are in the shop for free download. And I, since I found this, I was like, oh my gosh, how did I forget it? I might knit another one of these in a different combination, maybe similar to this, maybe go for something different. But I do enjoy a trip down memory lane and knitting things I've already knit before because it has been like five years. And I bet you now my taste in yarn is like this. These are colorways I did when I first started. Look at this. This must have been like the first adaptation of one of the colors I did that was called Storm. Obviously, I had to have red. But it is interesting seeing where you started, where you are now. And also, I still love toadstools because they're part of me, which is a whole new story for a whole new day. Toadstools are my jam. But there you go, squishers. I thought I'd pop in today, if I do my other video at the end of the week, to let you know some of the small squishes that I've got going on. So these babies will be available soon in the shop. Join up to Squishmail and you'll be able to buy the kit to make 
a set of these and also if you wanted to make like double length ones you can just get two kits or if you wanted to make oh, i'd love to make socks out of these as well actually i wonder if i could do a twist heel on a sock on this i just don't like heels i may give that a go but i'm gonna knit the rest of this so you can see what the difference is but oh um, i'm gonna go and catch up with the rest of my squish before i do a couple more rows on my other project and until I speak to you next time, which hopefully won't be very long at all, maybe tomorrow, I will catch you then. And until then, don't forget, a bit like me, my mojo and my creativeness had to sit back and wait for me to get all my jobs done. If you've been having a bit of a creative break, don't worry, sometimes it just springs into life. Mine certainly did. Like, I feel like bursting with energy. This is a bit like a confessional box, a bit like a Big Brother YouTube box kind of thing where you pop in and you just confess everything about your knitting concerns and then somehow you come out with a resolution which i guess is a tip for you if you're ever worrying or one not worrying wondering thinking about something maybe film yourself talking it out loud and then maybe watch yourself and then maybe you'll have an answer it's a lot of fun doing that it means that you've never you're never going to run out of the answers to your problems which means that there's never-ending amounts of creativity popping up everywhere. If you can just catch it quick enough. Until then, Squishers, I'll see you later. Bye!